Hello my soccer universe. <laughs> Just unpacked and already in action. Was not really planned, but you know, it's a much better jersey than I thought. Yeah, Frankfurt is one of the big winners, if not, I mean, statistically the biggest winner over the past uh, Bundes 2 Bundesliga weekends, where they finally seem to be kicking into the next gear with a really well-built squad. At least this is what it looks like. So uh, definitely one of the more positive things. But in this video, we're also going to look uh, at the action that happened last week in Austria, plus two Bundesliga uh, weekends. And um, starting in the Bundesliga, I definitely got to say the biggest story is that we had now on two consecutive weekends, Bayern's Express being halted. First, they had to play Gladbach, where they completely dominated. And Jan Sommer was basically standing on his head to... Um, defend and then they got a late equalizer so that they avoided the first defeat of the season after being flying over the first three uh, weeks of the season and then on the past weekend that uh, that um, draw actually set up the first 1v2 matchup of the season uh, and it was a classic case when two are quarreling a third one rejoices. Uh, it was Union Berlin, and to the big credit, I think Union Berlin is an absolutely positive story. I mean, they have been for a while, but they keep impressing more and more. They were second. Yes, I think the win at Schalke was a little bit um, too heavy for uh, too heavy of a win. But uh, the way they play, they are really, really hard and tough to play against, and they have a clear identity. And even Bayern couldn't really handle them all that well, surprisingly. Uh, and it was clear, whoever wins that game is first in the table. However, there was no winner. And so it was Dortmund already on Friday. They wouldn't have, have sniffed Dortmund. But in the end, Freiburg, who we actually lamented a, a few weeks ago that they actually undeservedly lost to Dortmund. It's Freiburg, who uh, made kind of a miracle comeback. I will talk about that game later on uh, to beat uh, to beat Leverkusen and put them pack them back into trouble so you know it's all very very intertwined there but I thought this was a really really uh, interesting constellation and well Union Berlin is definitely a smaller club than Freiburg I would say but it is one of those cult clubs and uh, the way they're working is really really impressive um, Freiburg equally impressive I mean that I think they might be a bigger club than Union Berlin however they're by far one of the smaller clubs in Germany uh, but having a nice new stadium and also playing in Europe so a uh, really really good story is Dortmund <sighs> I don't think the second place is any indication I mean uh, it is more that um, Yes, they, are, they ground out some wins, which is something that they uh, really couldn't do. And I think their win against Hoffenheim was a much better win than the one against Hertha. Hertha actually getting a first win. Hey, there's another, the, bigger, the big team in Berlin is actually getting stuff done. So yeah, I also maintain that I think both promoted teams are enriching the Bundesliga, especially Bremen, uh, who uh, regularly get results. Um, Schalke is still without a win, but I think there's something there that might actually uh, keep them in. And I want to mention another team that is flying a little bit under the radar, but is still unbeaten. That's Köln. Uh, again, getting a rather impressive win at Wolfsburg. So yeah, just saying out there. That's interesting. In Austria, the fallout after the big Rapid crisis is that yeah, Rapid may be bouncing back, although it was in both cases this week uh, unconvincing. We had a cup round where um, you know all the favorites basically made it through. Um, I think only one Bundesliga team, Hartberg, got ousted, and uh, Lask had to work really, really, really hard. Um, and then on the weekend, it was all derby time. And uh, in all three derbies, arguably the uh, underdogs got something. Uh, one was a goal fest, the Corinthian derby. The Styrian derby uh, was quite the opposite. And the up Austrian derby was emotion poor and probably one of the weirdest games of football I have ever seen. 
I'm not kidding. This was an absolute odd game. And we, of course, gonna spend some time on it. But while we're in Austria, let's start in the Austrian Cup round. Ah, I see, yeah, here is um, another Bundesliga team, uh, Austerbad Miravaka. I think this was the revenge game. Uh, Altach escaped relegation at the cost of Admira last season, despite having a much worse record only due to the league format. So Admira Wacker setting kind of the record straight and ousting Altach, uh, Salzburg easily over Gurten. I already said Lusk really had to struggle hard. They uh, missed the penalty in the first half. They went down in the se uh, around the 70th minute, uh, equalized late once uh, Nakamura came, came on then overtime. They scored, scored the goals, but this was really, really rough watching. Uh, a classic uh, Sturm against Austria Salzburg. Uh, but, uh, they win 3 1 Wolfsburg over Deutschlandsberg. 5 uh, 1. Uh, you see Klagenfurt against Bregenz. This was another one that uh, seemed like 80s Bundesliga. Uh, easy win there. Um, Tirol easy over Dreiskirchen. Ried had to struggle against uh, Hertha and Ried was a team that, uh, you know, barely had a win. And then the two big Vienna teams uh, get the job done. Austria a little bit more convincing than Rapid. The draw happened yesterday, and this is just a draw. It will happen on the weekend from the 16th, uh, 18th to the 20th of October. But uh, these are the pairings. We have a Vienna derby between uh, Sportclub and Austria. Vienna and Sportclub is one of those, uh, uh, meanwhile, a real cult club in Austria, uh, but has a big, big history. Lask has to also play a, a team from Vienna, uh, from Floridsdorf, 21st district. Um, the outstanding one is Sturm Graz against GRK. We have a Graz derby again. Because this we didn't happen since uh, uh, GRK. Graz, Grazer AK, GAK in German, uh, went bust. This is an absolutely uh, outstanding duel. Um, and yeah, I think tempers will flare high there for sure. Only Bundesliga duel is between Tirol and Rapid. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at the weekend. Austria, Austria went only 2 2 against Austria Lustre. Austria Lustre got the beat down from South Salzburg, but come back to, to Vienna where they actually had a 2 1 lead. At on one stage, but you know, Austria Vienna get the point. Salzburg easing over Tirol without going Weko. Sturm Graz against Hal Hartberg. That's a surprising nil-nil result, but you know, it's the way it happens. Rapid Vienna got a early lead against Altach and then uh it they had to defend it. It was a lucky win. Because Altach laid on, hit the post, uh and really, 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 really tried. I have a feeling this might be a season for Altach where it will eventually come together. The crazy derby was of course between Wolfsburg and Klagenfurt, where Wolfsburg in the first half had twice the lead, twice Klagenfurt could equalize, and then in the second half, uh, within a couple of minutes, they make it a 4 or 4 to lead before a penalty pulls it back, uh, spelling more trouble on Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg has been a steady top team in Austria. And it's this season they seemingly have trouble. Although last season they also start so, so, so slow. But I have have having the Wolf. Wolfsburg has now this kickback that Lusk had last season. Speaking of Lusk, I'd say that are all, are already one of the weirdest games of football. Uh, coming into it, uh, Reed lost, I think, four on a spin. Lusk won four on a spin. Uh, the game took, I mean, it didn't start very bright, but it took a turn for the worse for Lusk, seemingly, when Ljubicic out of nowhere. I mean, yes, maybe he was pushed over uh, and he didn't fall. And then uh, the defender is kind of, uh, he runs against him, but then he hits him with the elbow, slaps him. Yeah, uh, in isolation scene, it's a red card, although I felt it was, uh, yeah, the way that the Reed player is falling is definitely suggestive. Let's put it that way. However, uh, Reed couldn't do anything with that. Lusk stayed tight, and I think having the central striker taken out didn't change much of Lusk's game, to be honest. Uh, although, you know, uh, it was a little bit, yeah, they had to find themselves, and Reed had no idea. They had one good chance. But that was saved expertly, and then Lusk completely took over and had uh, numerous great chances. Where Shahin Ragl, the Radlinger, the goalie, uh, came up big, and Lusk took a lead in stoppage time through Nakamura, and it was fully deserved. Absolutely fully deserved. Second half. Uh, I felt that Lusk was already hanging back a little bit too much, but they kept it tight. Except for an offside goal, there was nothing happening from the read side. And then in the 65th minute, 
read player Unger for a rash tackle gets also sent off. And at that moment, and I think a coach Kuba thought the same thing. I thought, and now we're gonna take them apart. Because so far with 10 men, it was kind of, yeah, let's make the game a challenge uh, for, for us. But Lask was, for me, the better team. And then he makes changes. He changes the system, uh, you know, uh, takes a defender out, goes, goes a little bit wide to hit, hit, to, hit, hit, to hit it down the flanks. And suddenly everything gets lost in that game. And Reed is having really good chances and get an equalizer that was completely coming. And at that point, not undeserved. After that, Lask had to really shake themselves. But um, I would say it for, uh, up until the 88th minute, they had to the few chances, especially Kuluris, who had come, come on, had a free shot there. He missed just by a hair. And then Reed laid on, had even better chances and could have won that game. A uh, long overtime went nowhere, but uh, it was such a weird game because with a man less, Glask was dominating that game. It's parity, and I think our coach got too hungry and said, okay, we're not going to take take them apart. I actually thought, uh, just keep it within the system because Reed had so much trouble. Yes, their defensive midfield uh, in, in the end uh, was really working hard, but it was really the changes from Lusk that caused the trouble. And yeah, Reed coach uh, uh, Heinle afterwards said, yeah, uh, Reed were on the balance, the much better team. I did not see that. This was a hapless team that was kept alive. I'm sorry to say. And with all that, uh, we have the following standings here with that last Gloucester lead in, in, in the table. But honestly, I saw it come. This was coming anyway, but you know, it's a little bit galling if you lose against your local rival. It's not a derby if you lose against your uh, local rival points and uh, lose the top of the table, but still the only unbeaten team. Loads of changes on the bottom. Uh, again, Austria Vienna losing points. Uh, Lustenau staying in there. However, uh, the, the silver lining is that Sturm Graz didn't do much uh it still shows very 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 much the bars it should be that uh it's not last salzburg and austria lustenau who are doing really really well as reed packed it a little bit back uh but wolfsburg and Altach are the uh, negative surprises of the season um if you look final rag rag season except on the bottom not much changes but the top six stay rather stable um, and the same thing can be said for the expected final standings but it will be interesting if Austria Clark would really can outdo Wolfsburg over the season. Uh, upcoming round we have I mean it would be an interesting one repeat against Wolfsburg however it's a little bit of a duel of two teams that are still trying to find themselves uh, Salzburg have to go to Reed, where Reed probably will get beaten soundly again. Although, you know, Champions League, like it might actually work in their favor. They have been doing well against uh, Salz Salzburg and Klangfurt with, with against Sturm. I think that's the big one. Uh, Lask have to do the long trip to Lustenau, which I'm a little bit wary, to be honest, especially with an early kickoff. Going over to Germany, here are the results from the last weekend of August. With, you know, uh, I, I, have to, I have to say this time around, the Saturday games were not all that great uh, on a um, overall level. I mean, Dortmund's win at Hertha was nothing special. Anthony Modest gets his first goal for Dortmund, uh, but that was that. Uh, Leverkusen seemingly bounced back, uh, you know, starting with three losses. They get an away win that was rather uh, decisive. Palacios and two by Frimpong in the first half, and um, uh, Mainz just was caught, got, got a flat footed. Leipzig even get a win over Wolfsburg, I think, with Timo Werner scoring a rather odd goal. And I already said it that Schalke against Union Berlin was a really tight game, but it went completely pear shaped towards the end of the uh, first half. When uh, Schalke's errors, I mean, first they um, missed chances, they get the equalizer through a penalty, and then immediately Geraldo Becker hits back, and then it is Habera just before the half, and Be Geraldo Becker just after half. And it's a four month scoreline that did not reflect the game at all, and then in the end it became really, really ugly uh, in a 6 1 defeat, but that one was never happening. Or is said Bayern? really halted for, for, for the first time. I mean, Gladbach had always a little bit of a penchant of getting something against against Bayern as, uh, as of late. 
Um, Marcus de Ram gave them the lead, but it was really, I mean, uh, Bayern had a goal by Mane uh, called off for offside, and Mane is actually a new media darling already in Germany. Um, but Bayern had chance after chance, and it was Jan Sommer who was saving it, and then Leroy Sané gets the equalizer of Bayern, of course, pushing for a win, but uh, didn't happen. Uh, Kern played a uh, goal as Troy against Stuttgart, but again, still unbeaten, and then an absolutely mad game in Bremen, uh, with Götze scoring his first goal for his new employer uh, in, 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 in the second minute, but Bremen coming back through Jung and Bittenkurt to make it a 2-1 lead for Bremen uh, after 20 to 20 minutes. Kamada had the goal, but then Kono Muani, uh, a really good acquisition, just like a hot knife through butter, makes it uh, 2-2 for, uh, for Frankfurt and then Lindström in the 39th, a 3-2 lead. So this was the perfect half. Every team have him lead five goals. Uh, right after that, Musa so makes it then a 4-2 and you think at that point that Frankfurt are cruising. However, uh, you know how Bremen is. Late on, they score and again, it was a full crook pen penalty that made it 3-4 in stoppage time and then they even had the chance to equalize. So yeah, Bremen is definitely enriching the league. Uh, on this past weekend, uh, Dortmund fully deserved win, especially in the first, first half against uh, Hoffenheim with uh, Marco Reus uh, scoring and it was luck because uh, if, uh, if Bellingham uh, touches the ball it would, would have been offside but that was the only luck because they missed so many chances and then in in, in, the, in addition uh, um, Bino Gittens uh, got a uh, injury so yeah uh, the injury bug is hitting them again but Hoffenheim was too tame to get something from them in the second half uh, Leverkusen against Freiburg, uh, another really, really weird game because in the first half Freiburg was not on the pitch. And Leverkusen was running circles around them with Damien by giving them the lead. It should have been more. However, right after the half, Ginter and Gregoric, within six minutes, had the game turned on its head. And then Freiburg actually really seemed to be the more mature team, looking rather good in the process. Leverkusen 65th get the equalizer through Schick, where Callum hudson Adoy makes his first start and he gets already the equalizer, uh, but Freiburg expertly kicks it back and uh, Doan makes it 3-2 and as we know already, uh, this meant that they took the lead in the table. Uh, Bremen and another two late, late goals, um, Schalke, Stutz, Stuttgart 1-1, one, one. I think it was more a point one for Stuttgart than for Schalke. But the big one was Union Berlin against Bayern. And what a tight game it was. Yes, more chances for Bayern, of course. However, Union Berlin took the lead off a, crim a Trimmel free kick, which probably should not have been a free kick. Um, but Kimmich then immediately uh, hits back, also Trimmel deflecting it into his own goal uh, there. And then you thought that Bayern are gonna kick on. Yes, they had some good chances, but again, uh, either they were thwarted or just Union Berlin kept the game really, really, really tight. And very late on, they had the chance to win it all uh, as well. So, um, huge credit. I think it was the first time that Union Berlin at home to Bayern did not lose. So, huge, huge, huge credit to them. Uh, we have to live with the idea. I remember when they came up, when I really thought, yeah, I mean, cult club, but will they do anything? Boy, was I wrong. Absolutely wrong. I mean, they have been increasing from season to season. They are uh, they are really enriching the Bundesliga, and it's great to have another team in Berlin, one that actually seems to be run the right way. So that was a dig at Hertha. Um, Köln. Again, with their really, really good, they 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 are really good and sturge their team still unbeaten. Go down to uh, Wolfsburg uh, in the second minute. I have a Lubicic and, Paolo, and then a Paulo Otavio Ongol turned around and Kainz, who was uh, outstanding, makes it three one. Uh, and just when Mecha had put one back, almost immediately Adama Jan again after Kainz assist makes it a four two scoreline easy win. Frankfurt super impressive over Leipzig, although one can be said. I mean, Danny Olmo got an early in injury, but you know with Emil Forsberg you have kind of the same player there. Leipzig was not on the field 
Frankfurt completely outclassed them and the 4-0 scoreline uh, at first you think it's high no this was fully deserved it was absolutely deserved Kamada getting the first goal Sebastian Rode adding a second both assisted by Cole Muani, who seems to be the signing of, of the season uh, to the scoring and while scoring he already is celebrating I mean that was uh, something to see uh, and then a Rafa Boré score uh, pen penalty makes it actually a proper scoreline that was really as deserved as the scoreline says. Then uh, yesterday, Hertha got the first win and Mainz, Gladbach just got appointed by it and now they lose at home to Mainz. Go figure. Gladbach is one of those teams that are really, really hard uh, to figure out, but maybe it was just a blip along the course. The table, Freiburg up top, Dortmund ahead of Bayern. Would not have expected that at any time, especially when we made the last video. I did not see that coming, but that's why the games need to be played. Uh, Udo Berlin, despite the, uh, air, the arrow down, uh, I still think it's rather remarkable that they are up there. And we may actually see Udo Berlin in the championships. Uh, Mainz and Köln move, move, moving up. Uh, Frankfurt still only in 10th place, but I think now they're in touch. I mean, if you look at the points, up until Frankfurt... I think it's rather, rather, rather tight up, up, up top. Uh, and then there's a clear break. So there's a clear uh, upper 10 and a lower 10. And uh, surprisingly, Leipzig is in there. I'm not saying that Leipzig are done yet. But they will have to have a, a clear turn to turn around. Schalke for move out of, of the relegation zone. But we have Wolfsburg down there. We have Leverkusen down there. Doesn't look good for any of these teams. Uh, judging them from the adjusted standings, again, Freiburg and Union Berlin are the two positive surprises of the season. So far, they have racked up more points than you would expect. Bayern now finally with a little red after two to, uh, twice losing points. Uh, on the bottom, it's clear that Leverkusen and Leipzig are the teams where we look at, yeah, you guys are not doing well. Wolfsburg and Bochum similarly. However, despite Bayern having the slight red bar, they're still awesome favorite to win the title. And it's still Dortmund, Leipzig and Leverkusen. However, now Frankfurt, having gotten a little bit turn, uh, uh, turnaround now, back in fifth place, whereas Gladbach is knocked down, Union and Freiburg staying uh, up there. Again, we this is early doors. This is mostly driven by the ratings because we have many, many games to play it. I think over 90%, but it's an interesting snapshot. Schalke now for the first time out of the expected relegation uh, zone so they would not be in the playoffs so that's interesting to note uh, as well uh, i give you here the upcoming uh, two weeks of fixtures a class between bayern and stuttgart although stuttgart has, is not as good as they used to be leipzig against dortmund of course is the big um, name uh, matchup although i think Köln against union berlin is the one to really watch i also think freiburg against gladbach there are some really good games on sunday has to be said uh, and then the week after we have uh, the derby in um, uh, in the Ruppert between Dortmund and Schalke uh, after one uh, year break we have also Bavarian derby between Augsburg and Bayern I do not expect Bayern to drop more points and I think Gladbach against Leipzig that could be an interesting one as well and then we have a Baden derby between Hof Hoffenheim and Freiburg so yeah interesting stuff happening so yeah Again, uh, extensive video, but I wanted to uh, cover both parts uh, of Aust Aust of the German-speaking work, the two Bundesliga. Bon bon um, please drop a line below if you want to add anything. Of, of you, you had a question, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.